Come on in. Hi. Hey. Rodney, nice to meet you. James, nice to meet you. Hi. What made you pick up a skateboard for the first time, and what was that experience like? Mm, I wasn't allowed to. Why not? My dad, he goes, no, they're bums, number one. Number two, you'll hurt yourself. And so I just waited till Christmas Eve, and I begged. So he goes, first time you get hurt, you quit? Okay. And so from then on it started, and I was like one complete pat little kitten, you know. <laughs> and it's funny, I think the first day I did, I fell on my teeth. I was blood all over, and I was crying. I was like 11. And he goes, what are you crying about? And I go, I just don't want you to make me quit. And I remember it took him aback, and it was... For that very reason, he allowed me to keep going, because I wasn't crying about pain or anything else. I noticed that, like, you know how he's, like, a very humble person? You know how, like, monks are always, like, like this? He's kind of yeah. like that. That's his style when he skates, and that's kind of what he looks like. So how did I grow up? I grew up in a small town, and maybe the best thing for me is I grew up in isolation of, of what everyone else was doing. And I come out here, and I read about the pros, and I thought that they were so good. But I get out, and they're just people. Because you don't, you read about them and they seem like gods, especially in a little kid. I can't tell you how many people come up to me and they go, I thought you'd be bigger. I thought you'd be literally, literally painful. Like every time they interview Rodney Mullen or anything, like they don't go into this kind of stuff. It almost seems like all these people, like they've had it from the beginning and there was no uncertainty. Like their, their trials and tribulations and their issues and the problems they faced are played out almost to make them look that much more superhuman, that they didn't face these human issues. You were pretty successful from fairly early on. Um, was there ever a time where you're like, okay, maybe skateboarding, you know, maybe my professional career with it won't go forever, and you investigated other avenues as well? Sure, because my dad hung it over me. I had to quit a few times, a few times. First time you're going to get hurt or you're becoming too crazy or, or uh, whatever it was. Well, I was always really good at school. And so there was always a, an outside reason, you know, stop it. And then I was like, well, college starts, time to grow up. You're going to have to get a real job and stuff, so start focusing on that. So, so the point is, is I always had this pressure that it could end always within a year. Hmm? And so in my mind, I always focused. I went four years biomedical engineering and math. And so I always had plans. And it never was to make a career out of skateboarding. In fact, having a career of skateboarding almost robbed me of the joy I have skateboarding. Success or, or representation, they're very elusive. And all I can keep emphasizing and re-emphasizing, oh, look inside. And do I see a way to manifest not only what I'm good at, but also what I love. Because those two things, you hopefully, they won't be opposed to each other. And you'll lean them, what is it, the accountant that wants to be a lion tamer? You know? Monty Python, don't be that guy. <laughs> the funny thing is, you mentioned the, uh, the accountant that wants to be a lion tamer. Well, I was very good at accounting, but I dumped that and decided I really want to develop software. I really want to do that. And it was so frustrating going around at a career fair and being like, well, do you have anything, anything that I can get started in, anything that I can just get my foot in the door, I'll work really hard, that sort of thing. And they would hand me like a paper and I would read the description. And it would say, late night help desk consultant. And it was just like, Oh, what am I even doing? I, did I even focus in anything? Just go back to very basic things. Mm -hmm. uh, no one has it all. Mm -hmm. You are entering one form or other, a very competitive area. You are going to job fair and saying, hey, can I get my foot in the door? Mm -hmm. Just know this. Just like back to skating. Love the simple things. Don't expect to be put in any special position, Mr. Miyagi type of thing. Just do the simple things, things that you know, and get satisfaction out of that. Le you got to learn their ABCs. They're not going to hoist you to the top no matter what, unless you prove yourself. No one's just going to offer you some position at the top. Learn the movements for the sake of the movements and enjoy those movements. And come in humbly. Look, I'll do what you got to If you want me to be some night tech reading a script, Fine, that's what I'll do. But learn something else that will allow you to get some perspective from un underneath or above or from the side that will eventually allow you a perspective that they have not yet seen. You see? Your day will come. What do you think is, personally for you, in your life, the ultimate achievement that you want? The ultimate achievement? Mm -hmm. 
Not just in skateboarding, but just in life. Yeah. Dude, it's just peace. I defended that title, call it a title, it's so corny. But you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. World champ, whatever. All those years. And that's slavery. That's slavery. I don't, oh, I don't know. Go ahead, James. Okay. I, I can, uh, I mean, I can't, I, I'm no way saying that I can relate, but I think just on like a really small scale, I can kind of see how, how you're saying. It, it's so amazing to hear that after all the success that you've had, that the only thing that you want is peace, not even the money and not even the fame or all those rabbits that people are following. I just, I just find that, find that amazing because it, it almost seems like it's inevitable because people are driven to do amazing things, but it's true. Like every single person, it seems like they eventually get to the end of it and they burn out and it's just all downhill from there. I see so many people with so much talent and all these attributes I wish I had. And they get what they want, whether it be money or fame or whatever it is that they idealize that that's it for me. And then it just stops. They won't run. They won't chase anymore. It somehow robs them of the joy they had of doing what they did. Mm -hmm. For like 11 years, I won like, I don't know, 35 out of 36, 33 out of 30. Anyway, I lost one contest in 11 years. And all that did was make me crazy. And I thought I couldn't compete for a year because I was getting crazy. My, my dad made me stop. It's like, well, okay, what am I without contests? To be number one, is it important? No, it's not important because I just skate. I just love to skate. The point is, it's like, who are you? What is your distinct contribution? And that is so valuable. Whether it gets you anything, trophies, doesn't matter. It's just, if you know you did it, that's what keeps you going, you know? Success is elusive. I think what you said just now has completely averted me from going down this pretty horrible path that would probably only get worse and only more frustrating. And I think it's going to actually radically change how I think about things. I want to thank you so much for that. Well, you're welcome, and thank you, you know. Thank you for articulating that to me.